and Jessica Bill. Here is the one and only 50. <laughs> Great. How are you? Everything's good? Yeah, man. Everything's good. We got a live crowd in here. Oh, yeah. We don't mess around here. <laughs> I couldn't hear a thing you said. I said you got a live crowd Oh, in yeah. Here. They're crazy. Yeah. First things first. I ha I'm just dying. I found this picture and being a big fan of the sport. Just what is going on here? <laughs> this is 50 playing golf. Yeah. This is awesome. I was actually at, at like, a charity event. And they, um, you know, you, golf, it looked like one of them sports that you can just do it. You know, it's like the ball, you got to just yeah. hit it. Yeah, like it's easy. I was there for about an hour before I could move the ball. Yeah, <laughs> not so easy, right? Yeah. Did you hit it at all? It's crazy. Did I mean, you... they came over trying to help me out, techniques, told me I keep your arms straight, yeah. and then, you know. That's all crap. All different things didn't work for me, man. No, no, no. I tried again, though. I went out, I, you know, I was supposed to play 18, you know, 18 holes. I did about four before I gave up. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Have you ever played golf before? Yeah, but I know you like a big golf. I love to play golf. Anytime yeah. you want to go, I would love to bring you out to play golf. Just to see the people on the golf course's face. <laughs> Terrified as 50's going down the fairway. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, thank you. For, we have a ton to talk about. First off, um, music. When is your new record coming out? Uh, my new album will be out late March. How, how far along are you on the record? About 90% done. I'm actually in the studio with Dr. Dre right now. Yeah, how's Dre doing? Oh, he's doing great, man. And at this point, you've obviously had so many hit records before, worked with Dre before. What, what does this record sound like? Um, it's tough. Like, this record, I've been listening to a lot of music away from hip-hop, because I, I think after Get Rich or Die Trying, I influenced a lot of the actual artists to create material that had a little more aggressive content. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's a lot of the same stuff going on, so I wanted to... I just went even further back. I'm listening to, like... The Motown era. Really? You know. To find an influence? To find something new to do. All right. Did you listen to a lot of Motown growing up? What was the record that you heard when you were a kid that was like, this is, this is what, I'm going to be a rapper because of this record? KRS-One. The bridge is over. That was it for you knew right yeah, away. That was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. KRS-One appreciates that. For me, it was a record called Working Class Dog by Rick Springfield. <laughs> That's what changed my life forever. Um, Vibe's got a great article about you and M in it. Where, how is Eminem? Uh, I, feel, I feel like we haven't seen him in quite some time. Yeah, he's, well, he's working. They should expect a new project from him soon. M's got this song, Public Enemy Number One. I sense someone's tapping into my phones. Why do I got this feeling in my bones? I might die soon. Stuff like that, like some of the new M that I've heard, like that line is a lot of him saying, like, I'm trying to just, you know, have a lot of songs, put them in the can, as if it's so, almost sort of morbid. Yeah. I mean, well, a lot of times, M, what he's been able to do better than a lot of other artists is capture confusion and campaign a lot easier than the rest of them have been able to, because they get egos and images, and the image come up, and they got to be a certain way or behave a certain way in front of the general public. You know, and he, he, he'll write his confusion if he feels like that at at some point, it'll actually put it That's down. That's a good thing about him. Like, whatever he's yeah. feeling, it's in his lyrics. Yeah. Um, he's been an important part in your career. Absolutely. Probably the article talks a lot biggest, about your friendship. Yeah. yeah. One of the biggest. He's like, I know he has positive intentions for me, so I can accept constructive criticism from him. When it comes time to build new records like the project I have now, the majority of the pressure comes from my last album, the success of that. Right. So I'm in competition with myself. Um, there's been a lot of talk about you retiring and this being your last record coming out in March. Is there any truth to that? Nah, I'm, I won't make me. We're in all those movies now. Yeah. I'm excited about the film project. First of all, you were in the first movie you did was directed by Curtis Hanson, who's a great director, and now you're in no, this no, movie no. that Irwin. Jim Sheridan. I'm sorry, Jim Sheridan. Yeah. And Irwin Winkler did this one, yeah. um, who's great. He did Rocky and uh, he produced Rocky and Goodfellas and. A lot of great projects. A lot, a lot of great movies. Raging Bull he did. I mean, those are some great. Some great company for you to be in. And Absolutely. I, I figured I'd try to start at the top and just stay there until everybody, <laughs> you know? How was it a lot easier the second time around doing, doing a film? Well, it was exciting for me. It was a challenge for me every time I get outside of music, you know? And 
the, the project, Home of the Brave, it just stood out to me. I actually read the screenplay. Initially, it was about three soldiers that returned from the Iraq war. And um, I, I went and had a meeting with him. And Erwin kind of, his perception of me was something totally different before I actually sat with him. And then he was excited about the idea to do it. And then they kept expanding and writing my portion of the screenplay. Do you have to audition for the films that you do, or do they? Well, that they one offer you roles. A lot, I get a lot of offers, but that one I, I wanted to be a part of, and it, they kind of made room for me. And you had to, oh, they just, they sort of wrote you into it because yeah. you wanted to do it? And have you been to Iraq? I actually performed for the soldiers. I was on tour out there, so I was in, like, <laughs> South Africa. How was that? Uh, it, was, it was an experience. Like, as soon as I got off the plane, the guy said, I'm not going to bullshit you, you can die today. I said, what? <laughs> you said, really? <laughs> I think people probably just assume that, like, you know, just your, your life and, and how you grew up, that, there's, that that would be an intimidating yeah. challenge enough, just, you know, the streets of, of right here in the U.S. and the stuff. You've been shot a bunch of times. Yeah, and then but you, when you volunteer, you don't think that when you get there, they're going to say, yo, you could die today. <laughs> yeah. You know? What'd you say when he said that? I was like, what? What is that? <laughs> like, looking down like he was crazy, but, you know, we went... We performed, you know, I'm sure some of the people that I interacted with weren't the people that loved ones miss here, because I think a, a person's spirit changes with that much death around them. You know, you got soldiers out there that write, you know, death letters. Yeah. Like, if when I die, right, send right. this letter home, you know, like, so they're conscious of it. Any problems when you were there? And I was actually, we actually had to stay there like four and a half hours after the performance, because there was some activity outside of the actual camp. But Were you scared? No. Nah. Because I was in a safe area. Yeah, there is such a thing. Um, tell me, I'm going to see a clip here from the movie Home of the Brain. I told him I was there. I said, this ain't going to look good. <laughs> yeah, right. I came out here to perform, and then you let him get me. <laughs> yeah, no, that would not be good at all. <laughs> good, you're good. You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put you on a Black Hawk helicopter and let you go home. Bye, 50. <laughs> get him home safe, please. Uh, tell me about your character, Jamal, a little bit. He has got to experience... Uh, uh, the dealing with sort of the re-entry back here in the States after spending time in Iraq. Yeah, he's actually traumatized by the events that take place in war. Even with, in a justifiable situation where someone's in imminent threat, you know, he still is uncomfortable with killing a woman. Mm -hmm. You know, so he never actually gets over it and he doesn't actually know how to deal with his feelings, so he goes to anger because it's the most comfortable feeling. Mm -hmm. And um, he just kind of spins out of control. Like, the whole time he's in war, he's looking forward to getting home to be with his girlfriend, which is common, mm -hmm. you know. And, and then, then once you get home, for some unknown reason, you're sort of... Yeah, because he got mood swings and he, his, his own behavior is just pushing him away from, you know, the person that he was looking forward to being next to. Right. Let's take a look at 50 in action from Home of the Brave. You're up. I'm telling you, real good. I'm going to surprise a lot of people when they see this movie. Yeah. Um, I couldn't help but think in watching, I was watching the movie today, and not that I was surprised, but I think a lot of people will be, because you're, you're just a very strong performance from somebody who hasn't done that many films. And, um, and I was thinking, guys, it's crazy, because what's going to happen to 50 is that this movie, you, you already won a Grammy, and like, now this movie's going to blow up, like, now you're going to have to go on Oprah, and if so, what's going to happen when that happens? <laughs> she'll probably invite everybody but me. <laughs> oh, right, she's done that before. Yeah, she'll do that. She'll, she'll have the whole cast she'll but say, you. everybody but the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What is her deal? Um, how's your... It's her audience. She's been catering to a specific demographic of people for so long that she's become them. So she can't really... Yeah, but right, uh, I don't get it. How's your son? We gotta go, but how's uh, your son? He's great. Right? He's yeah. getting big. What, if, if, uh, how great is it to be 50's kid at Christmas? What are you gonna get oh, him? Oh, man. He's not up this late. Everything he Tell me get, seriously, what is... What do you, give me one gift you're gonna get him. PlayStation 3. There you go. You got to have that. You got a few of those. Congrats on the film, and thanks for coming thanks. in to talk, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Don't forget to watch the movie, Home of the Brave. It's in theaters now, wide release in January. We'll be right back with the king of the movie trailers, Don Lafontaine.